Hello, and welcome to another episode of Butterfly Kisses, a journey of spiritual transformation. I am, as always, your host, Amy Gray Cunningham, and I hope you are having a fabulous weekend. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about ways to improve your health. Are you tired of eating healthy and exercising all the time, but just not seeing results? Then today's episode may just be for you. I'm talking with Krista Van Cor, who is the founder of Wild Remedies Magic Lattes. These magic lattes have botanical blends that you can mix with your favorite milk of choice, and they have gourmet flavors like spiced chocolate, strawberry rose, or almond. And one of the main ingredients, especially in the spiced chocolate, is the shaga mushroom. And so today we are going to be talking all about the healing powers of mushrooms and the importance of taking responsibility for your own health and how to heal naturally. We're going to be hearing from Krista about her journey through healing physical ailments that had have been plaguing her since childhood and how she took control of her own health and found chaga mushrooms, the power of the healing mushroom. But before we get started talking with Krista, I wanted to remind you that next Sunday, July 31st, we have a new episode, another new episode at 9 a.m. Central, or we have a new episode at 9 a.m. Eastern, and I will be talking with John Goff, who survived years of physical and sexual abuse. He had an obsessive compulsive disorder. He suffered from depression and has a genetic neurological condition called Tourette's syndrome. John was determined not to let his past or diagnosis define him, so he took to martial arts and energy work, which led him on a path that changed his life forever. It's a fascinating interview, so I really hope you will join me next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern for this amazing conversation with John. And also, I wanted to let you know about a, a special offer I have that is going on through the end of August. It is, I'm offering my mini Akashic Record readings uh, for $90 which is an amazing, amazing price. And for those who are unfamiliar with the Akashic Records, just so you know a little bit about what they are, they are an energetic library of of information that contain the details of your souls and its life, its soul's journey. The information can span through past lives, this present incarnation and future possibilities. And during this mini self And during this mini soul profile reading, you will understand the energetic qualities that make up your soul. I will go into how you express yourself so that you can really step into the life that you are desiring. We will also uncover hidden talents and uncover your life purpose. What can you expect from an Akashic Record reading? An in-depth understanding of your soul's orientation gifts and challenges that you may bring with you into this lifetime from previous lifetimes. We will talk about your spirit guides and how they work with you. And we will, we will go into your primary life lesson that you came into this lifetime to learn. We also talk about soul. We also talk about soul specifications that make you unique and can help you find your life purpose as well. Those are really, it's kind of like the spice that I feel like God puts into our life. And it's very interesting. And you can also ask the records or your guides at least one or two questions about your life purpose and what you would like more clarification on. So I open up the records for you and we can channel that information. If you are interested, please visit my website at amygraycunningham.com backslash soul realignment to sign up for this amazing opportunity. And don't forget to please subscribe on Apple or whatever app that you use to listen to this podcast and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube. All the links are provided in the show notes. And you can also subscribe to my weekly newsletter on my website, either Amy Gray Cunningham or ButterflyKissesPodcast.com. This way you won't miss it. Miss, this way you won't miss it when a new episode is available. So with that being said, Now let's join today's conversation with Krista. Thank you all. And remember to spread your gorgeous wings and fly, my friends.
Hello, and welcome to another episode of Butterfly Kisses, a journey of spiritual transformation. I am, as always, your host, Amy Gray Cunningham, and I hope you are having a fabulous weekend. It has been so much fun this weekend. I've had a great time. I went to go get my hair done with the girls, and we just had so much fun yesterday. I am so glad that we get to do that every five weeks religiously, whether we need it or not. <laughs> In today's episode, we are going to be talking about ways to improve your health. Are you tired of eating healthy and exercising all the time, but just not seeing results? Then today's episode may just be for you. I'm talking with Krista Van Cor, who is the founder of Wild Remedies Magic Lattes. These magic lattes have botanical blends that you can mix with your favorite milk of choice. And they have gourmet flavors like spiced chocolate, strawberry rose or almond. And one of the main ingredients, especially in the spiced chocolate, is the shaga mushroom. And so today we are going to be talking all about the healing powers of mushrooms and the importance of taking responsibility for your own health and how to heal naturally. We're going to be hearing from Krista about her journey through healing physical ailments that had have been plaguing her since childhood and how she took control of her own health and found chaga mushrooms, the power of the healing mushroom. You'll hear more about Krista's story in this upcoming episode. So please stay with me. But before we get started with Krista, I wanted to remind you once again, next Sunday, July 31st at 9 a.m. Eastern, we have another episode of Butterfly Kisses. And this next week, I'm going to be talking with a gentleman. His name is John Goff, who survived years of physical and sexual abuse. He uh, overcame an obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, and he lives daily with a genetic neurological condition called Tourette's syndrome. And for those who don't know what Tourette's syndrome is, please join us next Sunday for John's amazing story, because he was not determined to allow his past or his diagnosis to define him in any way. And he took to the martial arts and energy work, which led him on a path that absolutely changed his life forever. It's an amazing episode. So I please hope you will join me next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern for this amazing conversation with John. And also, I wanted to let you know about an, uh, a special offer that I have going on through the month of August. It is a mini Akashic record reading for only $90. It is an absolute steal. And for those who are unfamiliar with the Akashic Records, they are an energetic library of sorts that contain information and details of your soul and it, your soul's journey. The information spans through past lives, present incarnation, and future possibilities. During this mini soul profile reading, you will understand the energetic qualities that make up your soul and how to express yourself so you can truly step into the life that you desire. We talk about your hidden talents and uncover your life purpose. So what can you expect from this reading? First, an in-depth understanding of your soul's origination, how God created your soul to manifest in this lifetime, gifts and challenges that you bring into this lifetime from past lifetimes, how many spirit guides are working with you and who those spirit guides are. We may not go actually into who they are, but how you can work with them. I think that's the most important thing. And then what is your primary life lesson during this lifetime? Why did you incarnate? What is the thing that your soul really wanted to, to, to learn in this lifetime? And then we also talk about soul specifications that make you unique and can help you really truly find your life purpose. I call them the spices that God puts into our soul. And, you know, if you're, if you're interested and would like to, you can also ask a few questions uh, in the records about your life purpose and what you would like more clarification on. So... If you are interested, please visit my website at amygraycunningham.com backslash soul realignment to sign up for this amazing opportunity. And also, please, so we can get the word out and tell everybody about this awesome podcast, <laughs> please subscribe on Apple or whatever app you're listening to this podcast on and share it with your friends. And then follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Most of all of them are Amy Gray Cunningham. I think Twitter is Amy Cunningham one. So you can find me there. All the links are provided in the show notes also. And then you can also, another way you can uh, get in touch with me or get more information on podcasts or anything updates that I have is through my subscribing with my weekly newsletter. This way you won't miss an episode when it's av available. 
with that being said, let's get moving with conversation with Krista. Thank you all. And remember to spread your gorgeous wings and fly, my friend. Krista, welcome to Butterfly Kisses and tell us a little bit about your journey of spirituality and what led you to your wild remedies and creating this next phase in your life. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. I've been all over the place. I've lived in, oh gosh, I don't know, a handful of countries and have traveled a lot uh, in, in, in my life and have, you know, had some really interesting experiences that led me to uh, developing this beautiful collection of products that we've just launched recently. Um, but really all of it kind of came to fruition due to having my own health challenges. So I, you know, I guess it's my karma in this life, but from a very, very young age, I have just suffered with all kinds of health issues. It started as a child with uh, just constant throat infections. I always had tonsillitis, other infections, like, you know, my sinuses, I had like a few weird surgeries that I needed to get. And it was just, it was just always, always something. Um, I was constantly on antibiotics, which we know now how the ramifications of, of taking antibiotics, you know, destroys our gut health and can affect our, our, our neurological um, processes. And yeah, it was just, it was very, very, very challenging. And in my twenties, things actually got even worse. So as a child, it was like these throat infections. And then, you know, I had panic attacks that started when I was a teenager, Remember, like barely left my house for about a year. And then the severe clinical depression started cropping up and oh, wow. eventually, yeah, it was just, it, it was, yeah, everything. Once I got to my twenties, I finally had my tonsils removed, which was an absolutely traumatic experience. And that stopped the tonsillitis. However, it's really interesting. I'm working with some in, intuitive healers right now that have kind of explained to me, like, you know, you can remove, like, for example, what I'm kind of understanding is like a lot of our illness comes from emotional trauma. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've, I've, I've always known. And I thought I did a lot of work around it. I thought I healed a bunch of stuff, but, um, you know, there's still a couple of things that, that, that I'm working through and that are being identified right now. And, uh, what I'm really coming to understand is, especially with this, this throat issue that I've had, it, you know, appears as though there was an energetic imprint with my throat chakra. Um, what I'm being told is that there was just a lot of silencing of my voice as a child, which created this energetic block that was manifesting as um, tonsillitis, had the tonsils removed, and then it ended up moving to my thyroid. So I ended up gaining, oh gosh, I don't know, 70 or so pounds at one point. Um, inflammation, just massive, massive inflammation all over my body. It was almost unbearable to function, to get out of bed. And yeah, these things just kind of kept getting worse until I really started understanding nutrition. And that made a really big difference for me. I had no idea <laughs> about the concept of nutrition at that point in my life. I was in my mid twenties. I was just, you know, kind of self-medicating at the time and partying a lot. And I always tell the story about how Netflix saved my life. <laughs> I was watching Netflix one day, probably hungover, and I ended up coming across a documentary. It was like Forks Over Knives or Hungry for Change, one of those like food documentaries. And that was a really big paradigm shift for me because I was like, oh, wow. You know, like there are companies that are purposely putting stuff in our food in order for us to get addicted to them. And, you know, there's all of these side effects and consequences, um, you know, by having all of these chemicals and things in our food. So that was really eye opening for me. And then at that point, that was sort of the first time that I started putting like, you know, real whole foods into my body or being like, you know, much more conscious about that. 
And so that definitely helped, you know, push me in, in the direction of, you know, more health and balance still definitely struggled. I feel like there's really only so much that you can do on the physical level with, you know, the nutrients and the supplements and all of those things, super important, really, really good for you. However, there is still this other layer that if we don't ever investigate it, all of the underlying stuff will just end up cropping back up um, or coming back as something even worse. (laughs) And so that has been a really big lesson, something that I've been focusing on. And it's wild to see like how quickly my, my body is changing now just by doing some of the, the, the inner work. But yeah, I mean, that, that is essentially the reason that I started Wild Remedies is because of my own health challenges. And also because I was led by the, the universe, I had a whole bunch of really cool serendipitous, serendipitous events that led me to learning about the chaga mushroom, which was, it's a medicinal mushroom that is in one of our products right now. And it was the featured product in my first tea product when I created Wild Remedies. And the story is <laughs> really quite, quite interesting about the time that I had started learning about health and wellness nutrition. I think I also saw like the secret or something on Netflix and that was also a really big paradigm shift for me. And that just kind of led me down the rabbit hole, excuse me, of learning about spirituality and quantum physics was really fascinated about the science behind all of that and the physics of the soul. I think that's really, really cool. And shortly after kind of going through this big health transformation and, you know, starting to practice, um, you know, law, law of attraction and just, you know, getting into more spiritual kind of modalities, I ended up selling everything that I owned and moved overseas to go work for, for Mind Valley. That was back in 2014. I lived in Malaysia for two and a half years and was just totally steeped in everything, (laughs) wellness and and transformation and got to meet some really, really incredible people. And so that offered a lot of growth for me there. And while I was still working at Mind Valley, I had come home to Canada one summer and I was contacted by an ex-business partner of mine. And she was like, you know, I have this client, he's got this really interesting product and he's looking for d- design help. I'm, I'm a designer by, by trade. And um, she's like, yeah, you, should, you should meet with him. And at this point I was kind of considering, you know, like just thinking that I wanted to do some sort of product. I had spent my life, you know, designing and creating things for other people. And I was just starting to feel like nudges towards maybe creating something on my own. And I went and met this gentleman who started telling me about this really amazing tea product that he was brewing at home and selling at festivals. And it was this chaga mushroom tea. And I'd never heard about chaga uh, at that point. And he was telling me about all of these incredible health benefits and how it has the highest source of antioxidants on the planet and, you know, all of these crazy healing things. And I was like, this is wild. Like, I don't know how I've never heard of this before. Cause at that point I had really like dove head first into all of the health stuff. And, you know, I was one of, you know, on, on board with all the nutritional yeast and things that were kind of weird at, at, at that time. So I was totally fascinated and I thought, okay, well, this is interesting. And then a couple of days later, I ended up visiting um, a girlfriend and she brought up Chaga and she was talking about how the First Nations have used it for a really long time and how amazing it is. And I was like, well, this is so weird. Like I just, I, I heard about this for the first time the other day. That's really interesting. And so I kind of, all right, put a pin in that. And then a few days later, I ended up going to this place that's called the center of the universe. So about 45 minutes outside of my hometown, there is this area called the center of the universe. The story is that back in the seventies, an apprentice monk from San Francisco showed up to like this remote area in Canada and did a bunch of energetic tests 
and declared it the center of the universe. So, yeah, so it's this very auspicious place. People come from all over the world to do like meditation retreats and stuff there. And, um, you know, now that, you know, I was all into all of the things uh, spiritual, I was really interested in going to check the place out. So I went and was met with the gentleman who owns the property. He took myself and my family on um, a little bit of a tour and at one point he was kind of showing us stuff that you can eat in the forest and he stops and looks at me and he goes you ever heard of chaga mushroom <laughs> and I went okay <laughs> sure. yeah I think I got the message loud and clear so that is really what got so from, from starting with the health challenges and then being divinely guided and pointed in the direction of, you know, working with a specific health food in, you know, in, in the mushroom realm, that's really how I, I got started. And when I went back to Malaysia, I started researching medicinal mushrooms and the best way to consume them and where the best quality product comes from. And I ended up hand making my own tea in my kitchen in Malaysia. I launched, I launched the brand at the Bali Spirit Festival. And uh, that's what we'll start off with. I know, and it was totally crazy. I don't know what I was thinking, but I put like 200 tins of mushroom powder in my bag and just like went to Indonesia thinking that that wasn't going to be a problem. So naturally I got stopped and I was a little bit afraid for my life for a good 15 minutes, but I I managed to to make it through (laughs) and attempted to sell my, my, my mushroom tea in like a million degree heat outside. I think the festival was like five days. I had to sit outside the whole time. It was so, so, so hot sitting next to these guys that are selling like nice cold ice cream next to me. So you can imagine how well that launch went, but that's, yeah, that's kind of where, where everything started. It's been a pretty, pretty interesting uh, adventure to say the least. (laughs) And you're still, you're still selling it today. So that's, that's a, that's a funny story to start off with for your, yeah. yeah. (laughs) What is the medicinal, medicinal properties of chaga tea or chaga Mm -hmm. tea? Yeah. What makes it so good. Medicinal mushrooms are really interesting. Um, they've become quite popular just within the last few years. Mm-hmm. And some of the main ones are like chaga mushroom, reishi, cordyceps, maitake. And they, they essentially, they're, they're adaptogens. So there's a lot of medicinal qualities in them. There have been countries that have been using these as traditional folk medicines for a really long time. For example, in Russia, you, like chaga is a common ingredient in like cough medicine. So it's something that is much more well known than in the West. It's much more popular now, thanks to, you know, a couple of brands that kind of paved the way and have made it more popular. Um, but there's also a lot of, you know, pharmaceutical um, uh, research and stuff that's being done with, with medicinal mushrooms because of how potent they are. And so each mushroom kind of does its that does a different thing. I would say, um, you have like lion's mane, for example, which works really well for, um, improving cognition. Um, you've got your chaga, which, you know, a lot of them work on the immune system, but I would say chaga probably is one of the best ones for modulating the, the immune system. There's some that, you know, will help relax the the nervous system, but they're all adaptogens. So it means that they kind of work differently for everybody. Um, so if you have some sort of imbalance in your body, it will just kind of help bring it back in, into balance. And I know for me, like, I definitely, definitely have had a huge difference in my immune resiliency since taking chaga daily. I traveled a lot and I was the kind of person that every single time I got on a plane, I got a cold. It was like, I just had the world's crappiest immune system. Like I was always catching something. And since I started, you know, taking chaga every day, that just stopped. And so I, I feel like I just have so much more, oh my gosh, time resiliency, you know, less downtime being sick. I can feel much more confident when I'm traveling. Um, I would just put like, 
you know, even while, while I was traveling, I would just put a little tin of tea in my carry on and just, you know, make a big cup of chaga tea on the plane and sip that the entire time. And it just felt kind of like my, my insurance policy <laughs> while, while traveling, to be honest, like it really did work that well for me. Um, and again, like it works differently with, with, with everyone's body, but that was, that was my experience. And so I was like, okay, this stuff is pretty amazing and I need to share it with others. Now is, is tea the best way to consume mushrooms or? Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a few different, uh, ways to consume them. There's, there's tinctures, there's, um, you know, teas, you can literally, I mean, if chaga is found in your area, you can wildcraft it and just steep the chunks at home. It's something that you need to do for at least 12 hours. So you can like harvest some chaga chunks, put them in a crock pot and let that, you know, steep for about 12, 12 to 24 hours. Um, and then there's some companies that have made that a little bit easier for us by creating um, powdered extracts. So they've already gone through maybe like a dual or a triple extraction uh, process, whether by water or alcohol, and it creates um, an instant powder. So that, that's what we have in, in our product, our spice chocolate product. It's, it's really concentrated. It's easy, easy to, to use. And chaga actually has like a really nice flavor to it naturally. It has natural vanillin flavonoids in it, which is really interesting. You wouldn't think that it's just kind of like this funny looking brown conch that grows on the side of birch trees. All, all the while it has all of these medicinal properties and vanilla and flavonoids, which is really, really interesting. <laughs> is it uh, caffeine free or is there caffeine in it? Oh. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no caffeine. Yeah, there, there's a few com uh, companies that do mushroom coffee, right? So mm -hmm. they kind of ingeniously came up with ways to you know, make the mushrooms more palatable and, um, you know, kind of come up with a way to, to make it easy to get these nutraceuticals into our bodies every day. And so by pairing it with coffee, something that some brands do, I don't do super well with caffeine. So we don't have any caffeine in our products. What we have are what we lovingly call magic lattes. So they're botanical blends that are meant to be mixed with a milk of choice. And they have gourmet flavors like spiced chocolate, strawberry rose, um, or almond lavender dream has hints of amaretto and vanilla. It's really delicious. Um, mm -hmm. Not all of our products have chaga, just the, the spiced chocolate, uh, but each has its own kind of suite of uh, botanicals and nutraceuticals and they're, they're good for different things. So the spiced chocolate with the chaga, that's our immunity blend. And then we have our beauty potion, which is the strawberry rose. It has high dose vitamin C, and a really cool ingredient that I source from France that's clinically proven to plump your skin. And then our sleepy time potion, which is the almond lavender dream. It has passion flower, chamomile and lavender extracts in it. And so that's a really nice one to kind of calm our, our nervous systems. Lovely to have be before you go to bed or even in the afternoon, if you're just super stressed out, kind of like I've been the, the past week or so. <laughs> Yeah, usually around three or four o'clock, I'm ready for my uh, nighttime tea. <laughs> 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 kind of calm the nerves down a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you figure out how the, the correct blends? And I mean, did you take like a science course or I mean, you just learned this from from watching other people? I mean, this it's such a unique talent that you have to be able to to, to know yeah, well, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm completely mesmerized by it that you can figure that out. Yeah, I mean, I so I, I'm a creative. That's just what I do, right? So everything from, I mean, like you know, designed the packaging, did all the custom illustrations. Yeah, it's really just this. That this whole project is just a creative expression for me that kind of draws from all of the things that I love and that I'm passionate about. And honestly, like when, when I had the inspiration for creating these products, I was like, I, I knew that I wanted to create products that were each one focused on something specific, right? For example, immunity, beauty, resiliency, that sort of thing. 
And I'm also a foodie, right? So I kind of just creatively came up with like flavor profiles in my mind. And then, you know, I, I, I know a little bit about herbs. I'm actually taking a course right now to learn more about herbalism. And then I ended up working with a food scientist who actually knows a little bit more about this stuff than, than I do. Um, so that was a really fun process. I essentially, you know, I, it was really important to me to make sure that we had therapeutic, like actual therapeutic benefits of all of our products. Um, so they are like Health Canada certified natural health products, which means that we had to have a certain amount um, of potency in, in the ingredients that we used. And so I just made that very clear that this was very important and we wanted to be able to make claims with our, with our products here in Canada, which is tricky, <laughs> but it also, you know, kind of laid that groundwork for, for the quality that we were producing from, from the beginning. And yeah. And then it was just a creative process from there, kind of going back and forth with flavor profiles and tweaking ingredients, having to remove some, you know, because of health Canada, there was a lot more really cool stuff that, that, that I had in the formulas originally. Um, I think we will kind of improve upon them as time goes by, but we sort of had to start somewhere. It was a new process for me. And so I was like, well, we'll just, we'll, we'll keep things a, a, a little simple in the beginning, but I think the, as time goes on, our potions will get a little bit more, more sophisticated now that we've, we've done this once. <laughs> How long has Wild Remedies been around? Oh gosh. Well, it's been six years since the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was about three years ago that I had inspiration for this magic latte line. It wasn't called that at, at that point. It took about a year from when I had the inspiration to actually get to the point of getting started. It was interesting. So I've worked with, uh, I, I work with a variety of, of intuitives. I just, that's just been something that's been very helpful for me in terms of mentorship in my life. And one woman that, that, that I've worked with for the past five years, she's been right about everything in my life for the past five years. She's absolutely wonderful. And it was really interesting because she had told me that this, this one cycle that I had coming up, there was going to be a lot of product development. And so at that point, I just had my first, you know, a little chaga tea product I had no business plan. I had no product line. Like I, I had no idea what, what I was doing at that point. I was just like, I made something pretty and I was just, you know, out there trying to sell it. And, uh, I'd been at it for a while and I was starting to get kind of tired. And I, and I had this idea for this, you know, really cool product line that I wanted to create. And I was like, well, I don't know how this is going to happen. Cause I don't have the money for it. But I knew in the back of my mind, Pooja said that there's going to be all of this product development. So this was the year that I ended up moving back to Canada. I think it was 2018, I think. And I ended up getting into kind of a coaching program for, for health food startups. And <laughs> that was a really cool experience. It was a great time. Of, or it was the first time I've ever had mentorship in my life and with industry experts. So that was really, really cool. And, you know, we were discussing my, my tea product and they're like, well, you know, this is really pretty, but like, do you have anything else? Like you kind of need a product line, like, you know, and all I had at the time was just my idea and my design mock-ups. And I said, well, yeah, like I have this idea. And so I showed uh, one of my mentors and he's looking at my laptop and he's looking at these designs and he's going, Hmm, this is really interesting. And kind of quiet for for a little bit and he's like well you know I, th I think you have a problem here and I said well what's that and he said that th this will work he's like whole whole foods will buy this like you, you you need to figure out how to how to make this and I guess I just needed that encouragement within a few months I ended up selling the you know rest of my tea at markets you know just now living back in Canada I had some consistency I could go to the markets and sell the product and I used that cash to to do R&D and it took two years of building a business plan like a proper business plan begging people for money to you know get cash to to for for startup costs and yeah and we just launched in 
September of, of 2021. So it's just been a few months. So where do you make all your products at? Do you have a warehouse or? Yeah, so we have a co-packer in, in Vancouver. We kind of went, I don't know, I, I did things ass backwards a little bit. I would definitely do <laughs> some things different, but I kind of went like all in and we ended up working with like a large um, ma- manufacturer to, to, to support our process initially, but we're going to be kind of taming things down a little bit for the next run. So uh, we found another co-packer that is friends with one of our uh, sales brokers and it's much smaller. We can do smaller runs. We can do more, you know, innovative stuff a lot, you know, more quickly when you're kind of working with these large companies that are, you know, they, they, they have quotas and they have, you know, a whole bunch of other clients that, that, that are waiting to, to get their stuff produced. Um, it was kind of a, a stressful experience. So we're looking at doing something that is a lot more small scale, but that will be, you know, allow for more creativity. It's so amazing how you can go from a concept an inspiration, and then you just, you see it, you feel it, you know it, and then you just, you just make it happen. Yep. You, 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 you knew it the whole time and you just, you made it happen in this 3D world because you knew this was your, your purpose and your mission in life. And I love it. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it has not been easy. I can tell you that much, but I deeply do feel like it is what I'm meant to do. And that's what, what's kept me going. What's the one thing you've learned through the whole process that you would maybe change or do differently if you had a do-over? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if I, if I would change anything. I mean, I think we went maybe a little bit hard on the amount of product that we manufactured initially Mm -hmm. um, and maybe could have done that a little bit differently by maybe doing, you know, product that was sold in cafes just so we could get more people to, to, to sample. That was a strategy that, you know, someone on my team had had mentioned might've been a good way to go. But these are things that I just didn't know in the beginning and, uh, and that's totally fine. So I, um, I actually feel though, too, you know, the way that we did do things is exactly the way that it, it needed to happen. Right. And I don't think the products would have turned out the way that they have and have created like the excitement and stuff around them if they hadn't been created that the, the, the way that they were. So, yeah, I mean, lots of little things I, I could think of that could have been improved upon, but that's how that, 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 that's part of the journey, right? Like those little failures are really what we need in order to, to learn. Right. And then to warn people about later down the road, once <laughs> we've, we've become wildly successful and have learned, you know, a bunch of lessons. <laughs> the failures really aren't failures as long as you learn from them, like that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, when you were going through all of the, the health issues growing up and you were enduring all of the, the physical pain at that particular time, because I firmly believe, and sometimes I, I question myself when I'm in the middle of, of the pain mm-hmm. <laughs> and the 103 fever and everything, but I, I firmly believe that we everything happens for our benefit. There's no, we, we don't just stumble upon something Mm -hmm. because I believe that we are the divine creators of our own experience and that everything happens, not necessarily for a reason, but for our benefit. Mm -hmm. And if we choose to look at it that way, then we're no longer victims, but victors. And we can, we can take what happens to us or the things that we experience and use it for, for our benefit, for our good. So when you were going through all that stuff as a child and as a kid, did you ever think that you would be a successful women business owner starting something from scratch and helping all of these people that you help? I mean, no, absolutely not. Uh, No, no. Yeah. I'd like to say that I was like, you know, an enlightened child, but it wasn't until, you know, I watched that documentary and started doing the, the exploration into spirituality that I was still very, you know, quote unquote asleep. Right. So I always felt that I was a victim of my circumstances, that there was nothing that I could do about it. 
like I was very much entrenched in the Western medical system. I was on eight prescriptions at one point. The doctors told me, well, you know, you're just sick. There's a bunch of stuff wrong with you. There's nothing you can do about it. Here's pills. That was it. Right. And so that's that, that, that's all I knew. And Mm -hmm. at that point, it's like, oh, well, you're young. You, you, you listen to what the guys in the white coat tell you thinking that they, they actually know what they're talking about when in fact they don't always. (laughs) (laughs) It was, it was a big paradigm shift for me to understand that it's important to take responsibility for, for your own health and that you don't need to hand your health over to an authority in fact, you shouldn't ever. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. really, really important to advocate for yourself. It's really, really important to research, you know, other ways to heal because you just won't if you are just, you know, relying on the, the standard Western medical system. It's not designed for health. It's designed for patching things up, right? It's really great when we have an accident and, you know, what, you know, there's really amazing things with, with, with that system, but there's also a lot of things that don't foster getting to the root cause and, and actually healing. Right. That's, that, 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 that's a really, that's been the biggest lesson for, for me. You said that you had to do a lot of healing also with changing your diet and what you're putting into your body, but also on a spiritual level, what types of things, if you don't mind sharing with us, what types of things were you doing to actually heal on a spiritual and emotional level as well? It's been kind of an interesting journey for me. I feel like I kind of floundered quite a bit in in that sense. So, you know, a lot of my childhood trauma has to do around relationships and I, I went through a really hard breakup a few years ago that, that did a number on me. Um, so it really just kind of, it was a traumatic event that when these types of things happen, it usually dredges up all kinds of other stuff from like yeah, your, yeah, your childhood. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, here you go. And for me, like it not only like rocked me emotionally and spiritually, but my body too. So I kind of went from like doing, you know, fairly well to kind of being brought back down to the second rung. And I just, I I kind of tried everything. I didn't have mentorship. I did reach out to like a, a couple of people, but it's only been very, very, very recently that I've found some really amazing mentorship and pretty powerful intuitive healers that are kind of allowing me to finish up the, the, the healing that, that, that I need to do. And it's really with the most personalized kind of healthcare you could ever imagine, because these women are essentially speaking directly to, you know, my spirit guides and, and my higher self and getting communication being like, you need to do this thing specifically. So I've been doing those specific things and it's, you know, stuff like, write a letter to your, your, your parents, right. Describing, you know, things that were, you know, hard for you uh, as a kid start doing breath work in, in, in the mornings, be more consistent with, with certain things like, you know, with health and wellness, there's so many different, there's so many different things that you can try. Right. And when you're struggling with stuff, you just end up trying a whole bunch of things and maybe not giving the right thing, the right amount of time. Right. And how are you supposed to know? Like there's so many different diets and there's all this stuff and it can be very confusing. And, you know, as humans and especially somebody with a brain like mine, it's like you just try all of the, all these different things. Okay. This isn't working. Well, now maybe if I try this, maybe this will work. Da, 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 da. And uh, you kind of just end up going around in, in circles. And so it's been really helpful for me to have very specific guidance on this is the, this is very much the best thing for you right now. And just focus on, on this. And that has definitely brought me peace of mind and, and results, which has been really, really like kind of astounding to me. That's yeah, it's been, it's, it's taken a very long time to, to have the progress that I feel like I'm experiencing now in a, a very short period of time. Kudos to you. I mean, doing, doing the work is the hard part and it sounds like you're doing the work and transforming. It's all about 
awakening and going through the process is mm-hmm. not something that happens overnight. Nope. None it's of this journey, is. As you said. Mm-hmm. So where can people find Wild Remedies? Well, you can go to our website, which is wildremediesshop.com. And on Instagram, our handle is wild underscore remedies. Can they buy them in the store anywhere or is it just all online? Yeah, so we're mostly online right now. Um, We are in, you know, uh, several locations here in Canada. No, no, no stores yet in the U.S. as we just launched here and we're focusing on Canada first. But yes, we do ship anywhere within Canada and the U.S. I can't wait to see you in Whole Foods. Like. Yes, we did actually, we are confirmed for Whole Foods in Canada. So we should be national um, with Whole Foods by November, I believe. Very, very, very long process getting into Whole Foods. But yeah, that that, that dream is is coming to fruition. So it's very exciting. Amazing. Yay. Yeah. And then Amazon, then take the world by storm. (laughs) (laughs) One step at a time. (laughs) Yeah. Was there anything else you'd like for um, our audience to know about you, your journey, Wild Remedies? Which which one is your favorite flavor? Hmm. It just kind of depends on the mood that I'm in. The spice chocolate's really lovely because it's very versatile. And if you are a coffee drinker, it's actually really nice to put in your coffee in the morning to make like a nice spicy mocha. Mm -hmm. Um, and strawberry rose, I love iced. It's very refreshing. It's such a unique flavor. It's literally like strawberry milk with a hint of rose, but I think my, my favorite is probably almond lavender dream. Uh, like when you smell it, it's just, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. The flavor profile is extremely unique and just so comforting and, and lovely. So I think, I think that's probably my fave. I like uh, anything chocolate is, is usually my favorite. So yeah, well, very delicious, creamy, creamy cocoa, a little bit spicy with some black pepper in there. Mm, lovely. Well, let me ask you one other question. If you had an hour to spend talking with someone on a park bench somewhere, your favorite location, you know, obviously with lots of roses and you know, perfect, perfect location overlooking like a cliff somewhere. Um, with nice water underneath and you could speak with that person for an hour whether that person be alive or on the other side who would that be and what would you talk about with that person well I don't know I think maybe um, Paramahansa Yogananda I think Mm -hmm. that would be a really really amazing conversation to have I'd just love to I don't know, I guess, pick his brain about some of the cool experiences. What I really loved about Autobiography of a Yogi was really like the the, the, the magical stuff that was documented, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, oh, yeah. the limitations and like all of these really cool things. It's just so fascinating. And I would just, yeah, lo- love to chat about all of that. Yeah, I went to see that movie, uh, his movie. Oh, it was it was a really neat 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 thing to go see his life. I've read the book, obviously, but yeah, it was made into a movie at one point. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if I've ever seen that. I'll have to look for it. Yeah, very interesting movie. He's had a very interesting life. Mm-hmm. Well, Krista, thank you for joining us today and for sharing your wild remedies with us. And yeah, I will put a link on the show notes for everybody so they know where to go and. Um, Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much much for having me. Yeah, it was great. (laughs) Thank you for joining me on another episode of Butterfly Kisses, a journey of spiritual transformation. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. This way you won't miss it when a new episode is released. Also, if you're interested in learning more about Akashic Record readings, you can schedule a free 15-minute consultation with me by visiting my website at amygraycunningham.com. Again, thank you. And remember, always spread your gorgeous wings, my friend, and fly. Until next time, see ya.